Great. Well, thank you to everybody for joining. My name is Caitlin Pena. I am the Director of Operations and Programs with the Center for Election Science. Uh, we have an exciting event for you all today. Um, first of all, we'll be joined by Aaron Hamlin. He is our Executive Director for the Center for Election Science. Um, and then we also have online with us today, Jean-Francois Lasselier. He's a researcher at the French National Center of Scientific Research, and he's a professor at the Paris School of Economics. His research is focused on democracy, particularly on voting roles and voting behavior. Um, and then we've also got Herad Egersheim. Egersheim? Um, she is also a researcher at the French National Center of Scientific Research, and she's a professor at the University of Strasbourg. Her research domains are history of economic thought, welfare economics, and experimental economics applied to voting. Um, so these two worked with Aaron on a um, nationwide polling study in 2016 around the presidential election. Uh, and that's what they'll all be discussing today. So I will go ahead and um, hand it off to Aaron. Uh, we're very excited uh, to, uh, uh, to have uh, Dr. Egersheim and uh, Lasse uh, with us uh, as advisors. They're, they're wonderful and it was uh, amazing to be able to work with them on, on the uh, 2016 project. Um, so maybe uh, just to kind of start us off uh, leading in that direction, um, uh, Harad, uh, would you like to maybe summarize and talk about uh, what we were doing with the, the project, the kind of methodology that we did in terms of, of uh, the questions that we're asking about different voting methods, what we were looking for, that kind of thing, just to kind of get us started off. Uh, yeah, so that's a very uh, vast issue <laughs> to start with, but uh, let's, I, I will try to, to cope with it. So um, yes, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for, for having organized this, uh, this event. So yeah, um, uh, as you just said, so I'm researcher at the French uh, CNRS, so the Center for National Research, and uh, since um, uh, 2007, uh, I begin to work with uh, Jean-François in particular, Jean-François Lallier on uh, voting methods and with an experimental uh, perspective. And so um, a few years later, <laughs> uh, Aaron uh, asked us and me in particular to, to join uh, the center. Um, after an invitation by the uh, World Forum for Democracy, where I have talked about uh, our results in, in France, because we have conducting many experiments in France uh, since uh, 13 years now, and a little bit more for Jean-Francois, actually. And the difference uh, with what we'll talk about today regarding the 2016 uh, election in, in the US, uh, because we have studied data, but focused on, on, on our survey and what we did in France was uh, is a little bit different actually because we has, we are studying data collected from uh, field experiments so experiments conducted uh, during actually the, the uh, near the official uh, station uh, the very day of the of the French presidential election so that's a, a little bit different. Of course, the, regarding the analysis of the data and stuff like that, we can have the same uh, kind of uh, reasoning and uh, um, that conclusion because it's a little premature to, to speak about the conclusion uh, of our results now, but um, the methodology is really different uh, when you, we cope, of course, with survey uh, than with uh, uh, data collected from the field. And, and one of the things that, that you had mentioned that I think it's important to, to point out, uh, both you and uh, uh, Jean-Francois have an immense amount of experience doing uh, voting methods research. So when you go on Google Scholar and you're trying to look at uh, uh, comparisons between voting methods uh, using polling or, or exit polling, there's not a whole lot out there in terms of like direct comparisons of, of different voting methods. Um, uh, but uh, when you, you're both your name and uh, Jean-Francois's name come up quite quite frequently, uh, particularly with the, the French studies that, uh, that, that you referenced. Um, so uh, maybe you can go into the type of uh, 
uh, maybe uh, Jean-Francois, if you want to go into the type of uh, voting methods that uh, we looked at during the, uh, the 2016 election. Uh, during this, uh, this poll, the, the main uh, objective was to study approval voting because uh, it was uh, conducted by, by the center. So it, it, it is really about uh, approval voting. And because it is in the US, the idea was, of course, to con construct, contrast the outcome of our approval voting with, with your first pass the post method. Still, uh, the uh, survey was a little more sophisticated than just comparing uh, uh, simple plurality with approval voting, because it also involved uh, other questions um, asked to, to the respondent, namely, how would you vote and on the uh, what you call the I think the rank choice model, rank choice voting model. Uh, how would you kind of sincerely evaluate the, the candidates? So that was these four um, methods, in a sense, um, were, were uh, studied. And on top of that, uh, there were uh, an experimental design uh, with this uh, survey, which was to, to, to have um, some participants voting on one set of candidates, a small set of candidates, and uh, the remaining voting on a larger set of candidates. Uh, this uh, idea uh, was um, uh, came out uh, from a theoretical research on, on voting methods, uh, research that points that uh, the one key feature of the voting, different voting methods, is how do the results vary when you add or remove candidates who might, in any case, be losing. But, but uh, the fact of adding candidates that are losing may change who is a candidate who is uh, winning. So this kind of uh, issues have some importance in theory. And so this, uh, this survey uh, tried to tackle also that issue. Um, so Harad, with the issue of adding and taking away candidates, perhaps you'd like to talk about the, uh, uh, the long and short list of, of candidates and how that played in uh, with, uh, with what we saw. Um, yeah, so... I don't know if it's possible to, to share something right now. Yeah, I will totally. try yeah. to. So that's, yeah, here. But that's not the right slide regarding this issue. The right slide is here. Uh, well. Sorry. <laughs> I think that's the one, yeah. You, you've, you've come quite prepared with slides, Sarah. <laughs> exactly. So, that's a special event, right? <laughs> so that, um, the slide, uh, uh, not the slide, but um, uh, we, are, we have um, tried to, to understand uh, why uh, the importance of uh, changing the, the set. So uh, as Jean-François just said, the, the long set with nine candidates and the short set with four candidates. And uh, to understand, in fact, why uh, uh, we obtain different kind of results regarding the, the sets we are dealing with. Um, so maybe Maybe I should come back first on the results now, or I don't know if everyone has have this, the results we obtained in mind, or? Uh, it's, uh, we'll leave it up to you. So. I think you should recall briefly the main results. Yeah, yeah. So that's another slide right here. Yeah, so that's... Uh, the results we obtained uh, with uh, three of the voting methods uh, Jean-François just mentioned, so plurality, uh, approval voting, and range, range voting. Uh, and so here you have the candidates, uh, the nine candidates. So in the short sets, you have uh, here four candidates, uh, Clinton, Trump, Johnson, Stein. And in the long sets, you have all the nine uh, candidates included. 
uh, the same for uh, approval and the same for range voting. So here you have uh, the, the main results um, regarding plurality with a short set, plurality with the long set. So the percent, and it showed the percentage of uh, voters uh, which vote for uh, one or the other candidate, the same for the long set. For approval, is that it's a little bit different. In fact, it's a percentage of voters who approve of one or the other candidate. That's why the total uh, can be um, uh, up to uh, more than 100%. Uh, and for range voting, in fact, it's an average grade uh, each uh, voter, each candidate, sorry, received. So here uh, we have, uh, you, you can see that uh, an important uh, result of uh, this, uh, this study is that, as you can see, under plurality, uh, with the short set and with the long set, actually, uh, Clinton is uh, the winner of this election. So first uh, change <laughs> regarding the, the official and national results, of course. Uh, regarding approval, it's very interesting as well because you can see Clinton is the uh, winner with uh, the short set, but there is a tie uh, with the long set between Clinton and Sanders, right? The results are very, very close. So there is a tie between uh, these two uh, candidates with the long set. And for the uh, range voting, the results are even more interesting uh, for the long set because you can see here that there is no tie anymore between Saunders and Clinton. Saunders is uh, the winner of uh, the, this uh, voting method, so the uh, range uh, voting method. Uh, Clinton, uh, Saunders, sorry, is the winner followed uh, by Clinton, uh, followed uh, by Trump. So uh, just to uh, stress, or of course, or to put light, uh, put into light these results uh, is very interesting per se, because you can see very clearly that uh, if you change, in fact, the voting rule, you obtain a, a different uh, winner. And that's a very uh, important uh, first point. Um, now, uh, shall I continue? Uh, and, and you, uh, with uh, right choice voting, which isn't on this particular screen, uh, also uh, chose uh, Clinton for both the short and long set. Is that correct? Um, uh, sorry, I didn't fully understand. Uh, so um, ranked choice voting uh, isn't on this particular one. Uh, on this particular slide, uh, but yeah. that also chose uh, uh, Clinton as well, correct, for both the short and the long set. Uh, I don't know if you have uh, uh, ranked choice voting on there as well, or if there's another I, slide that... Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's another slide. Is it, it's another slide, sorry. Yeah, so that's uh, the, the second slide uh, with the results, sorry. So that's the uh, instant renal you mean. Uh, the instant renal results. So uh, here um, you, you have Clinton, yes, at the, at the winner of this, uh, of this uh, election. So here you have uh, Clinton at the winner of the instant runoff, uh, followed by Trump, Sanders, and then uh, Improve. That's that's the result for the long set, and so you you we have here uh, our main results uh, in this, this very uh, simple uh, table. So here you, you can, I mean, visually see uh, the difference of Rina regarding uh, the short set versus the long set, and of course regarding the uh, different voting rules. So. Um, like going back, when we're looking at say like uh, a. Um, either the, the grading voting method, range voting, or the other cardinal method, approval voting. One of the criticisms uh, within those is that um, uh, either selecting only one candidate or in, this, in, in the instance of range voting, only using the extreme scores. Uh, I had seen on one of the slides that you had was a, a frequency distribution um, looking at approvals per ballot. Uh, and you may also have one on uh, range voting. Uh, so that may be interesting uh, to look at in terms of being able to see how respondents within the study used the grades and uh, decided how to allocate their approvals within their ballot. Yeah, so. Uh, and that's a question from, uh, from Keith. So 
Yeah. So thanks, Keith, for your question. So maybe, I don't know if you would like to. Uh, yeah, you mean the, yeah, so that's, we have, I have two slides here regarding the, the way, in fact, people grade or the way people uh, choose to approve of one or the other, uh, or not to approve of one or the other candidate. And uh, there is an interesting um, connection, uh, by the way, with the, uh, the study you made regarding the, uh, the primary uh, you, you sent us uh, yesterday. Um, so here you have the, um, the distribution of uh, candidates approved uh, per ballot. So that's for approval voting, of course. So you can see here, and, and we have um, a long dis uh, kind of long discussion regarding this issue. Uh, you have here the, um, so this distribution, and so the average number per ballot for uh, AV, so approval voting, is one point. Uh, 1.40, uh, uh, 24, sorry, for the short set, and 1.73 for the for the long set. So it's not a lot, in fact, uh, it's not very important, um, meaning that uh, more than uh, three out of four candidates uh, voters choose to approve of just one candidate, and two out of four choose to approve of only two uh, two candidates. Um, two out of four, sorry, uh, choose to approve uh, two candidates, uh, one candidate for the long set. So uh, we had discussion regarding this very specific point uh, because yeah, we, we thought that it's not uh, very important, at least regarding the, the French uh, experiments, uh, which turn around uh, 2.5 uh, approvals per ballot, which is a little bit more, and uh, we had discussion regarding the, this point. I don't know if uh, Jean-François wants to add something maybe on this issue. Well, yes, I, maybe I can answer on, on the issue of the maximal um, grade used by uh, uh, voters under range voting. So the, the um, uh, the question is that uh, how many people in a range voting system are going to use the extreme grades? So first, it's not, it's, there, is, there are two extremes, the uh, maximal grade and the minimal grade. The minimal grade when the system is, starts at zero, which is often uh, considered uh, the case under consideration. Then, especially when there are many candidates, this uh, zero also is a grade chosen by voters who just do not know the candidates or who know that there are very minor candidates who for some reasons are, are not interesting in the race. So uh, there are always a lot of people who choose the zero grade. Now, um, more interesting is uh, how many people use the maximal grade. Uh, so the theory goes that in fact all people should choose once, at least, one, at least once, the maximum grade, and that no one should ever use any intermediate grade. And that is clearly something that is not uh, observed uh, in, the, in the data. All the data we ever gathered on various elections always show a smooth distribution of uh, grades. So that it is not true that uh, people use only uh, maximal grades. This is what we observe in these uh, experiments. Now, of course, we can try to save the theory by saying, of, of course, but these are only uh, fake elections and in practice, people will not do that. Uh, of course, that's a possibility, but at least for the time being, we have no indication that that might be uh, true. Yeah. I would like to ask that to add a point, an important point with respect to range voting is that the, the issue is quite different if there are negative grades. Okay. And uh, we did try to test these kind of things, um, and we are not alone, but um, the presence of negative uh, grades completely changes the, uh, the picture. Um, if we want to talk about that, we could, but it takes us maybe a little further away. So I don't know. Sure. Well, um, do you see, how do you see using like 
say negative grades as being material versus just using a simple scale that starts from zero to some positive end? But again, we observe that. Again, we, 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 we observe that. Uh, so uh, the question was uh, uh, raised uh, because it was, there, was these theoret there are these theoretical answers, these theoretical answers, a priori answers that tells you, well, if you use, for instance, the, 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 the tags zero or one, like under approval voting, or the tags minus one, plus one, it should not matter, okay? Because um, why, after all, why? why? Because there is a mathematical possibility that if everyone who votes uh, zero on the zero one turns to one on the one minus one plus one, then it makes no difference. But the problem is that uh, people do not do that. So, um, uh, with respect to, to, in the last years, we studied uh, a lot of this by um, trying to, to, to have during the same election people using different scales. Okay. Um, our plan, because in all this theory, approval voting is kind of central. So, what we did is that we tried to contrast each time approval voting with one or two other methods. Okay. Uh, it's a benchmark uh, case. But as a matter of fact, we, we do observe that uh, negative grades uh, have um, an impact. They, are, they carry some symbols that are different from the zero grade. And, uh, and that's it. So the discussion, uh, should we use negative um, grades? Should we phrase the presentation of uh, approval voting, which is binary choice, as saying that if you don't vote, you vote against. This is something that is not well settled. Okay, uh, it is not clear. I can give you my feeling, but uh, there are arguments for um, and against. Uh, for instance, reasonable people um, um, tell me that they believe the the mere possibility of saying that you are against. Okay, as some. Um, uh, democratic value, and people do not think about that, but once they, they are given this possibility, they realize that it's very important. And so that's an argument in favor of using negative grades. There are uh, arguments against that, uh, and I think um, an important argument is that uh, in these systems, uh, you must be prepared to use these systems with many candidates, including many candidates that are not known by the voters, and that are not known for good reasons, because uh, they, they, they are odd candidates uh, that, that uh, and so um, many people will, will not express anything about these candidates, okay? And uh, naturally, they would use a zero if there is a zero for, for these candidates, okay? Uh, so it makes the comparison with uh, candidates that do that are known and that are, receive negative grades a little bit strange because you compare people who say nothing with people who say something. So, so it's it's a it's a bit uh, odd. If you want my feeling to if you want my feeling about that after many. Uh, open questions. I, I found that approval voting is so simple that, that it solves this kind of dilemma. You know. Uh, oh, uh, Harad, when, when you showed the earlier slide and the uh, frequency distribution for the number of approvals per ballot, um, even for the long set, like it was, you said it was uh, 1.7 uh, approvals per ballot. Um, so uh, given that, like, uh, even with as few approval voting uh, as as few approval uh, approvals per ballot as we saw, uh, what kind of impact did just did that uh, did that have compared to just being allowed to choose one? So did being able to choose that extra on average 0.7 per ballot for the long set or 0.3 uh, uh, per ballot for the short set? What kind of effect did that have? Um, yeah, and yeah, it does have an impact because, uh, as we, we just uh, speak about uh, about the 
the results and the comparison of the results between plurality and approval. So, so you can see that uh, in spite of the fact that 1.7, one might say, yeah, but it's not a lot and uh, uh, it doesn't make much difference. But actually, uh, when you look at the results, it's clear that it makes a, a, a very important difference. Uh, as you can see here uh, with these slides, uh, this, again, this slides with the result, which is important, of course, uh, you can see that uh, it makes all the difference between uh, the plurality and, and approval because uh, the winner is different. So the, um, and we obtained this kind of results as well in, in France in our experiment in uh, uh, 2007. Uh, we got a, a different winner in a way between the, uh, the true run system, which is this, the uh, official voting system in France and the, the approval voting. Uh, and we obtained as well this kind of results in uh, 2017 uh, with um, not directly with approval voting but with uh, different kind of range voting. So even if uh, people uh, change only a bit their behavior, it shows that it can change a lot the results. And, and so in terms of changing the results you, uh, you referred to in earlier French study, uh, I assume one of those is referring to uh, instead of Sarkozy winning, uh, Baru uh, winning uh, instead, is that one of the ones that you're referring to? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In 2007, uh, we found a, a, a different, um, a very important difference, yeah, regarding the who could have been the, the president of the French president. And uh, it, it was Bayrou, that is a centrist uh, candidate, uh, who could have won the election under approval voting, yes, instead of Nicolas Sarkozy. Um, and uh, Jean-François, perhaps you can answer uh, this one. So one, one finding that seems to come up uh, a lot, so like saw it in uh, one of the German studies and also seeing it uh, repeatedly in the studies that you conduct, that you as well as Harad uh, have conducted with the, the French studies, and that is the uh, reflection of support that candidates get who don't win. Uh, perhaps you can talk about that. Yes, so uh, um, obviously the, 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 the main criticism of, of plurality voting or single name balloting is, is that uh, uh, people uh, have to not lose their, 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 their vote and, and therefore refrain for, for candidates who do not stand, a, who do not have a chance, which has an, has an obvious consequence that these candidates do not get their share of votes, in a sense. Okay, so uh, this is, um, I guess, uh, an important uh, point uh, in um, for you in the U.S. Uh, with uh, plurality uh, voting. Uh, this is uh, also true. I think it's important to 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 realize that it is also true in the, in the in the runoff system despite the fact that because um, the, the, the presence of the runoff, uh, you can, if you wish, a vote at the first round without strategic consideration and not uh, having any fear of waste, wasting your, your vote and say, okay, I, do, uh, I vote with my heart uh, for during the first round. And in the second round, where the choice will be really serious, then I will vote uh, uh, in a purely strategic uh, manner. And uh, this is something that uh, is often heard. This is something that uh, is at work in, in how people think and, and, and practice their, their voting uh, in, uh, in this system. But still, um, it is not the case for everyone, and it is just uh, wrong to believe that uh, people at the first round of a runoff um, vote sincerely, and, and therefore that uh, the candidates have their fair share of votes. Uh, so I, I could elaborate on, on that, but, but I, mean, I mean, this is something that is very well known in, in uh, countries that practice uh, uh, runoff uh, system. This is something that is uh, discussed uh, 
uh, every time in the in the families and in the bars uh, before the elections. So, so these issues of uh, strategic strategic voting at the first round of a runoff is something that that is a, a political uh, reality. I mean, and I think this is something that you might have in mind in in the U.S. because I know that you you, you are also discussing the, the idea of having instant runoff. Okay. And the argument goes that with instant runoff, you can vote for the candidate you 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 like because uh, if he's not uh, if your vote is not counted for that guy, it will be counted next. Well, that's uh, not uh, going uh, uh, far enough huh? because in in countries that do use this kind of system, people do have to 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 to, to vote strategically even uh, only at the, at the first round. Okay, compared to that, the uh, systems where you really ask uh, to, 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 to give your opinion to each candidate independently from the other candidates, then you leave open the, the possibility that uh, each voter uh, just say what he thinks about uh, each candidate or say whether he approve or not each candidate, uh, whether or not this candidate stands a chance to win or not. Okay, so it's not an absolute truth, but uh, this mechanism is uh, at work in the mind of many of voters. So that at the end, it seems, it looks like uh, the picture that is uh, given by this uh, method as to uh, all the candidates, including the ones that stands uh, no chance of winning, is uh, more uh, true to, 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 to what people uh, think. Uh, Harad, uh, since you've, you've, you've come so prepared with all these uh, slides, um, perhaps you can, so um, one argument of different voting methods is like this idea that uh, third party and, and independent candidates, candidates that aren't quite as mainstream can get that reflection of support. Um, how do you see this uh, playing out with the data that we saw with uh, uh, ranked choice voting, approval voting, and range voting? Uh, for uh, independent and third-party candidates relative to how they were reflected under um, the plurality voting method. Oh, and you're, you're muted at the moment. So, yes, you, you mean uh, with, this, um, with this study, um, Um, not sure exactly how to. Uh, so, so, so I can different kind of candidates we are dealing with, with right, and how people yeah. might. Uh, I mean, um, yeah. for for example, um, in the twenty sixteen election, some of the third party candidates were. Uh, folks like, uh, particularly Johnson and Stein were the main third party candidates in the 2016 election. Uh, so how did voters' yeah. ability to use something like approval voting or range voting or even ranked choice voting, how did that affect uh, the reflection of support that these candidates got relative to um, the choose one voting method as well as relative to an honest assessment? Yeah, it seems to me that uh, regarding this little candidate, right, uh, it doesn't change uh, much. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So it depends, in fact, of the, the kind of candidates uh, we are dealing with. Uh, regarding the, the, this study, specific study, uh, I, except, of course, the, the change, a uh, very important change regarding uh, Bernie Sanders. Uh, it doesn't seem to me, uh, except you, if you have different opinion, please cut me, but uh, it doesn't seem to me that the, the role of this lit, very little or very minor candidates uh, 
is very different uh, regarding this different voting rule plurality approval or range voting or even instant runoff voting it, it doesn't seem to me that we have put some light on these uh, issues uh, i have here uh, maybe just what? this slide but i think it's too it's not very appropriate to show you this um, it, in the, the difference uh, regarding France, actually, is that some uh, little, very little candidates uh, have much more light uh, with approval or with uh, range voting. Uh, that's the case for little candidates such as uh, under plurality or, or under the two run system, such as uh, Jean Luc Mélenchon, for instance, or not Jean Luc Mélenchon, but uh, uh, or if I really sorry, or Olivier Besancenot in some elections, in some previous elections. So they got much more uh, approvals, they got, they got much more support, mm -hmm. and it showed that they have really a role to play mm -hmm. in, the, in the political landscape and in the, in the, um, in the country or in the uh, which, uh, people are voting and so on and so forth. But here for the US uh, presidential election, I'm not really sure that uh, we have Oh. We could show um, with the data we got that this little candidate played a, a real role, a, a, except I, I, except Sanders, except Cruz, but uh, uh, yeah. for for example, like uh, with under say plurality voting within the short set of candidates when there are only uh, Clinton, Trump, Johnson, and Stein, uh, it looks like uh, Johnson. Uh, gets 8.25% under under the the poll, uh, whereas uh, for, for under plurality voting, whereas under approval voting, it, it uh, looks more than than double. So so it seems like uh, perhaps here uh, they're they're still they still don't appear to be contenders. So it looks like they were never really in in the uh, in the race as a as a competitive sense. But thinking more about the reflection of support that they got, so like Johnson going from uh, 8.25 to over uh, 20% uh, and Stein going from three and a half to uh, just over 11% and thinking about that like so here we're seeing that relative to plurality voting and approval voting uh, also thinking um, it's the, the metric here for, for ranges we're seeing here might be a little bit hard to compare uh, but we may also be able to look at that with relative to say uh, ranked choice voting say looking at how well a candidate did uh, before they were eliminated uh, with particularly looking at Stein and Johnson, for instance. Yeah, 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 that, that, that's true. But um, I think that the, the main point uh, of these results is, is not really here. But yeah, yeah, you, you, you are right, of course. But I have a... I, I have a figure somewhere with this uh, gap of scores between approval and plurality, actually, but I'm not sure I have it here. But uh, we see that uh, even, of course, there is a kind of mechanic uh, increase uh, for these uh, candidates. It remains, uh, it remains kind of low uh, co as comparing uh, with the, the change of behavior with, uh, with Sanders, for instance. That's, it's a, very important difference, and for these other candidates, it remains uh, uh, much more, much less impressive, I, I would say. But I, I have a, a figure here, but I, I'm not, I'm not sure I will be able to to find it right now. Um, and that's and that's how, in fact, we can uh, define the different kind of candidates. Actually, that's typically with the we can say the gap of scores uh, that the kind of uh, study we have we have conducted in this paper. We can define the kind of candidate and uh, regarding how. Uh, uh, the, the, how important is this gap between approval and plurality, uh, range voting plurality, and so on and so forth, and that's how we can define the kind of candidate we are dealing with. And here, uh, John's, with this uh, definition in mind, uh, or with this uh, idea in mind, uh, it seems that uh, even if there is a I'll, some difference uh, between Johnson, um, between approval and plurality and so on and so forth. He, Johnson still remains uh, a, a, a little or candidate uh, according to, to this uh, definition. Uh, but I don't know if we can continue or pursue on this. Maybe, maybe I, 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 I can say a word on, on this. Um, 
sure. on, on, on this issue. So uh, with, with many uh, candidates, of course, the, the, uh, it opens the, the possibility of more renewal of uh, political ideas and uh, um, uh, the appearance uh, of, of new uh, uh, parties and things like that. And, and it has been uh, a major political at large uh, event uh, in the recent past. The emergence of uh, green parties in, uh, in Europe. Uh, in, uh, in the US, of course, it's uh, impossible to, to, to see that because you have really a two-party system for the moment that you are more or less blocked with, with that. And in, uh, in France, it's a little bit the same as in the US. We, 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 we have these, these uh, rules, uh, um, whereas more, most of other European countries have a uh, uh, system which make it easier for new parties to, 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 uh, to appear. And this is what happened uh, in, uh, for instance, in Germany uh, and in several other countries and the political landscape in these uh, countries and therefore the, the, the landscape of ideas uh, has changed. Now, in France, we, we, we observe that when we use uh, approval voting, the green candidates uh, really happen to have the, the same importance as they have in, 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 uh, uh, in, in other European countries. But uh, they are uh, barred, they, they, they cannot make it uh, in, uh, in politics due to uh, uh, single name balloting. Okay, so I think we, we, we saw uh, in uh, in France, we 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 with um, the comparison between uh, approval voting and single name balloting, what has been predicted by by by, by the theory, we see the advantage, um, the theoretical advantage of, of this kind of rules that can uh, widen the political uh, spectrum, and. Um, uh, this is, I think, the, the, the real political importance of this feature of approval voting to, to give a fairer share, more fairer share to, 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 to so-called small candidates. So I think we can, we can not prove, but we can really observe already that in, in this kind of data. Um, and so, uh, Harad, with, uh, with this data that, uh, that we're seeing, were there any uh, was there anything um, that you found like surprising relative to other data or uh, going future into other studies? Are there types of questions that you would like to see uh, asked? And you're, and you're muted at the moment, Harad. Um, yes, I, I just say that, I mean, one of the surprises, it seems to me, uh, regarding this data, and that's why the, the results of the, the survey you conducted with the uh, Democratic uh, Party is interesting, uh, at least in, in my opinion. Uh, is, um, sorry, I come back on this, on the number of candidates approved by ballot, as I just, I was saying that we were a little bit surprised by the fact that, um, the number of uh, average um, candidate approved by ballot remain a little bit low, even if it changed uh, the, the result, but still. And um, that's one of my, that was, that was my, one of my interrogation regarding uh, this, uh, these results as compared to, to what we obtained uh, with the, um, the French experiments. And uh, uh, we wonder if it was a, a kind of U, specific US behavior. Uh, I mean, US voters would be less able to vote for more than one candidate or one or two, but not more and so on and so forth. And with the results you just uh, posted regarding the uh, the democratic primary, uh, we obtain kind of very, very different um, results. Uh, I mean, I mean, global statistics with the, the average number uh, per ballot under approval voting 
very important number actually i just noted one of your uh, results it was um, 4.9 candidates uh, approved uh, on average per ballot so that's uh, very important of course and uh, so that's one of the of the thing we can uh, i guess uh, put into light uh, the comparison between this study and uh, what we, you just obtained that's what, what one of my uh, point of uh, uh, yeah. uh before going into uh, other folks uh, questions kind of a, a follow-up uh to that and perhaps uh Jean francois you can uh, answer this one uh, in terms of that uh discrepancy that harad uh uh, highlighted with the type, the, the number of approvals per ballot that you see with some of the French studies uh, that, that were done versus what we're seeing here um, in terms of thinking about explanations. Uh, for instance, like leading up to the election in 2016, there was a Gallup poll where uh, respondents were asked whether they even knew who Stein and Johnson were, and two thirds of people said that they didn't know. Um, yeah. So, so in, in terms of the media attention uh, that third parties and independents are, are, are able to get in the U.S. relative to France. And I'm, I'm less aware in terms of the uh, media attention that uh, third parties and independents get in France. So perhaps you could um, highlight so, that as, as a potential explanation. Yes, yes, absolutely. So, so, so uh, the situation is completely uh, different uh, in, uh, uh, in France and in the U.S. with respect to that. Uh, so in France, we have often, uh, we have usually more than 10 candidates, uh, something like uh, 12, 12 candidates, say, uh, for, for these most more important elections. Among those, there are uh, candidates that are not known or that are uh, not serious. There are um, maybe each time one or two. And, and all the other candidates are very well known including those who have very low scores. For instance, uh, we have always uh, extreme left uh, candidates, trust guys candidates. These guys are, uh, make, uh, they have al almost no votes, uh, very, few, very few people vote for them. But see, they are perfectly known. Uh, and uh, uh, their image, their ideas are perfectly known. So, uh, this is completely completely different with the, the polls that we, we we have in the in the U.S. where we face this uh, this forum. I'm, I'm, I think that uh, it should be important to 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 have um, experience experiments uh, done in the U.S. Maybe in um, local elections with with uh, more than and. Uh, with more candidates uh, known by the can by the voters, if this exists, I don't know. Actually, you you have a, a problem with the uh, uh, implementation and research on Apple voting uh, in in the U.S., which is that uh, uh, these um, rules shape the, the the party structures. Okay. And the party structure in the U.S. is really uh, defined by, by, by the current voting rule. Okay, this is a basic uh, takeaway of political science. Uh, and if you want to change the voting rule, <laughs> then you, you don't know. <laughs> maybe, yeah. And uh, Kayla, maybe you can highlight some of the other uh, questions that we have from some of our viewers. Sure. So I think we were able to um, cover some of the questions that were already in here. But if anybody does have questions, feel free to go ahead and um, put them in the chat. Uh, there was a question from Michael Weinbaum. He was asking about why the percentage um, that Clinton and Trump got in our poll under plurality voting, why would that differ from the actual results of the election? So I think it, it, uh, it's not so different. It's not so bad because this was a, a, a poll uh, made uh, before the election, something like two weeks before. Um, and so the, the, week, the week leading into the election. Yeah, one or two weeks. So, so things change even in the last days uh, of the elections. So uh, yes, uh, we don't have uh, 
exactly uh, we could have if, if we if we would have rescaled uh, the 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 the, the, the ballots observed in order to to, to match the exposed uh, what we know exposed but of course we didn't do that so uh, the, the result is different it's quite close uh, the fact that it's quite close proves that that the, the sample was good the sample was representative and, and people uh, answer these questions the way we ask them to answer please tell us what you would do in the re-election if it was to do. great thank you um, Tommy was also asking, he says, sometimes score voting allows leaving no rating for a candidate, right? That way yeah. their vote doesn't contribute to the candidate's average score. So no rating versus zero rating are two different ballots. Yeah, yeah. so we can answer that, that because uh, um, uh, sometimes score voting allows uh, what, uh, what that it means, it allows, so the, the, the definition allows, yes. So, so, so the issue is, how uh, are you going to, 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 what are you going to say to the voters? Uh, what is, will be the form of the ballot? Okay. What do the uh, voters will understand of what you tell them? How they will uh, infer what they can do from the form of the ballot? Okay. And how you count the, 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 the votes, the ballots, after that, okay? So it's, it's, a, it's a more complicated issue that, that, than it looks, you know, this, kind of, uh, this kind of question. So uh, um, would, uh, is no rating different from uh, zero, zero rating, okay? Uh, you cannot decide on that, okay? You can take a, you can make a decision, but then you have to uh, and say, well, well, uh, I, I, for instance, you can write in, in the in the de legal definition of the rule that uh, it is the same thing or that it is not the same thing. But then you have to to check whether or not people understood that, and whether or not they kind of accepted that. Okay, and we we looked at that quite in uh, quite in details, and. Uh, try to, to, to frame the ballots in different ways, in different places where we, we did the experiment uh, and things like that. And the answer is that there, there are no good solutions to that. There are no good solution. For instance, it, uh, it's not true that if you just write down, well, uh, ballots um, will be, um, uh, if, you, if you write nothing, it will be counted as the smallest uh, value or it will be counted as zero. It, you, you cannot uh, be sure, and in fact, it's not true that people immediately understand and behave that way. That's not, it doesn't work. So, so you have to cope with these uh, issues of uh, understanding. And uh, I think this is a problem for um, negative voting. It is a problem for negative voting. As a matter of fact, you have always uh, uh, an important part of, of the voters that uh, use uh, zero as what the grade they give uh, if they don't know, as they don't want to grade, okay? And they uh, are confident that the zero will be no point, okay? So um, the strength, of, I think, the strength of uh, approval voting and range voting is that it can be uh, understood by the voters as a quantitative things. We, we, we add points, okay? Even if you don't say what you are going, how you are going to count ballots that looks like point voting, uh, people will infer, true or not, that that's what you are going to do, okay? And that is true also for that the simplicity of approval voting, you just, Count you add the, one, the ones, okay? Uh, and uh, in this framework, uh, zero is just zero, okay? And negative is something else. You cannot say that negative is taking things away. It's uh, different. Gotcha. Yeah, it's interesting how much psychology goes into voting yes, systems, yes. right? Yes, you, you must face the fact that psychology pops in. Yeah, absolutely. 
Um, we do have another question from Colin. He asks, so how does this research inform 2020 and beyond? What research is taking place this year or in this U.S. election cycle? Um, so maybe Aaron, you want to um, note what we're doing and then um, Brad and Jean-Francois, if you, if you all have thoughts as well. Uh, sure, I can uh, highlight real quick and what we're looking at uh, for the uh, 2020 election as well as what we've done in the primaries. And I, uh, of course, uh, want to hear more about uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the work that uh, Leslie and uh, uh, Dr. Egersheim are, are doing for, uh, for France, as, as well as uh, um, how uh, we'll be uh, looking at the uh, 2020 election. Uh, right, right now, for the, so we've already done a lot of the uh, democratic primary uh, election using polling, uh, using a lot of the same methodology that we've done in this 2016 election. Uh, which is comparing uh, four different voting methods, having a control uh, measure. Uh, the control measure we did for the primaries was both this um, honest assessment scale as well as an honest ranking um, to be able to look at kind of an honest uh, beat all winner or honest conversay winner as well as a, an honest kind of high utility winner. So we, we've already done that within the uh, Democratic primary. Uh, looking forward, uh, um, working with uh, uh, um, Dr. Prasval and, and Harad uh, again in the 2020 election, um, uh, doing really a similar type of, of setup and like it's still kind of early, so it's, it's hard to know uh, all, the, all the details in terms of uh, what will be going on. What, what, what I, I, I kind of hope, uh, and I'm sure that uh, Jean Prasval and, and Harad are also hoping is, for some kind of interesting election. So right right now in the US uh, for the general election, it doesn't look particularly interesting. Um, so uh, only recently has uh, the uh, a third party candidate uh, with some kind of name notoriety uh, uh, jumped forward. Um, but it, it, if there are only two candidates, it's not a very interesting election. Um, and even if there's a third candidate or more, they need to have some kind of traction to, to make the election interesting. So uh, it, for, for research purposes, kind of hoping for an interesting election to, to be able to, uh, uh, to work with. Um, but uh, 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 Jean-François and, and Harad, uh, what, uh, what kind of things are, are, are you looking at and are, are you thinking about with both uh, uh, US elections as well as uh, French elections or, or elsewhere? Uh, maybe Harad, you can you can lead us off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you're right, uh, Aaron, regarding yeah the 2020 election in the US. We'll see. Uh, for the moment, in France, we still uh, we are as we said very much focused on the on the big uh, elections in France or the the big rendezvous that is the the French uh, presidential election. So we still have a little bit time to to think about it here. Uh, two years. Um, a priori and um, but yeah for for now uh, I'm continuing to we are continuing actually uh, to work on the on the data uh, collected in in, um, in the in the previous election in in France and so we are continuing as well to to work and I hope to to be able to continue to work with uh, with Aaron as well and uh, and, but we, we still have work to do on the on the data uh, collected in in 2017 actually in France. So that's uh, and in parallel, uh, uh, I'm conducting as well some experiments in um, uh, in the lab, and so not in the field, but in the lab and uh, in the lab uh, on, on voting uh, different voting rules. And it uh, as Jean Francois actually, but uh, it's uh, very um, enlightening as well because. Um, uh, it shows uh, much more precisely uh, this psychological trait, uh, in fact, of the of the voters, and uh, uh, they behave uh, very differently uh, in the lab as compared um, 
uh, comparing with uh, with the behavior in the field, and that is especially true uh, regarding uh, strategic voting uh, and regarding uh, what Jean-François was talking about, that is the the, the the scales with negative grades, and that's very very um, very interesting to compare. In fact, these uh, uh, two kinds of uh, of behavior, lab and field, uh, focused on on voting issues or voting methods. Yes, so um, research also is uh, is going on in the important uh, field of uh, uh, proportional representation uh, and, and voting rules uh, under proportional representation, which is a very vast and complex uh, <laughs> uh, matter. Uh, I, I, I believe uh, that uh, we, we, we've done a lot with, with, with the um, main elections, uh, uh, so the presidential uh, elections uh, in presidential system uh, countries like the US or, or France, of course, are, are, are the most, most uh, attractive ones, they are the, the most important, but I, I guess that if there are things to, 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 to change uh, in the uh, vo voting systems, uh, it will also come uh, from uh, other voting rules being used repeatedly by many people in, in various circumstances. So, uh, studying uh, voting uh, in uh, less important uh, settings, but still important ones, uh, be, be it political elections or uh, elections and decisions uh, in different settings, is uh, also um, valuable both for research and, and, and for uh, uh, popular science, I mean, and, and for, for culture in, uh, in general. Thank you. Um, all right, we've got two more questions and then we'll go ahead and wrap up, wrap up and let everybody get back to their day or their evening. Um, so Keith earlier asked a question that he thinks maybe needs a little bit of clarification. So he says his question is, if a large fraction of voters score any candidate at the maximum, not if every candidate is scored at maximum or minimum. Um, oh wait, Keith, can you clarify that? Because um, Here, I'll unmute you. That way you can ask. Go ahead. So um, there's this kind of two issues. One is that everybody votes max and min, and that's kind of viewed as a bit of a flaw. The other thing is if no, if a lot of people don't use the full range, if they don't use the maximum value at all. So those are kind of, and, and you'd want that. You'd want people to kind of normalize relative to the candidates. You'd want them to have somebody at the minimum and somebody at the maximum. So it's it, they're, they're kind of inverse problems, really. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so, so of course it's, it's different depending on, on the scale. So we, we, we use uh, small uh, or large scales of, uh, of range voting. So um, with large scales, and we used uh, two large scales. One is uh, 020, that may, may be strange to, to you, but that is uh, very natural in France because it's a, the way kids are graded in schools, okay? So 020 is very natural uh, things uh, to, to do in France. Uh, and 10 is a pass. You know, normally 10 is pass fail is at 10, okay? And we also used uh, a continuous uh, scale, which in fact is, po is possible when people uh, vote uh, online because uh, you, you can click on, on, on a line. Uh, and it's also possible uh, when people uh, use paper and pencil because what you ask them is, is to, to mark uh, a point on a, on a line, and then you can uh, scan these and automatically get, get them. So with these large scales, okay, you really can uh, ask the questions, uh, how many people will go to the maximum? And uh, there are people who go to the maximum for some candidates, okay? But the global picture is that they, they tend to use a lot intermediate grades, okay? Uh, even if uh, with these very large, uh, large uh, scales. And of course, with uh, small scales as, uh, for instance, 0, 1, 2, 
the question is a bit different, okay? So the question is, is a bit different. Then you can, can ask the questions, will people uh, use the grade one in the grading system, zero, one, two? And the answer is yes, many people do uh, for many candidates. I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, maybe I just can add something regarding uh, how people use uh, intermediate grades. And I was just talking about it, in fact, two minutes ago uh, when I, I, I uh, ah, sorry, I, uh, I put, uh, the, um, uh, I was talking about uh, the difference between lab and field and what is interesting precisely and, and the issue of strategic voting. And what is very interesting, in fact, uh, when one compares these two uh, uh, kind of, uh, of studies, uh, is one can see that people actually uh, use intermediate grades uh, much more much more uh, in the um, in the field than in the lab in the, in the lab even if you propose a uh, 0 20 uh, scales for instance as uh, I was, uh, was saying about, about that uh, people will focus on 0 and 20 they won't use intermediate grades they 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 understand very quickly, in fact, uh, how to uh, vote uh, strategically or to use this, this grade, this scale, but with, uh, with a real election or with experimental election, at least uh, they, are, they are using intermediate grades. So, the, so we can um, confirm through a lab experiment that people know how to uh, use maximal grades. They, they know how to use it and they know how to vote rationally or strategically uh, in a way, uh, but they prefer to vote uh, through intermediate grades. So that means that they, they want to, to say uh, what they really think and not to uh, just to vote strategically or rationally. If I may, all, all this is uh, pretty much consistent with uh, what is known in, uh, in political science that most people vote sincerely uh, that uh, strategic uh, voting exists. A non-negligible fraction of, of people do so, okay? But uh, they, 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 uh, they are not uh, the majority. And that, that is what, uh, what we see also in these experiments. There is nothing much new, I think, here. So the point is rather that voting strategically or sincerely doesn't mean the same thing on the different rules. That's, uh, that's the issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for that explanation. Um, all right, we've got one final question from Colin. He asks, um, wouldn't approval voting potentially enable a third party who isn't running to run and receive substantial support? So if no substantial third candidate runs in 2020 plurality general, that's not evidence that no third party candidate could have run in a 2020 approval general. So essentially he's asking, doesn't, doesn't approval voting give, give third parties a, a better chance at running? So yes, I think that uh, uh, all research on approval voting points to, to, to that. And we, I don't know if there exists proof in this matter, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, I'm confident it is true. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us, Jean-Francois and Harad. I know that you both are all the way over in France right now. It's probably around your dinner time or getting close. Um, we really appreciated you taking the time to chat with our supporters and explain the results um, of the election. And I know that we're all looking forward to seeing what we, what we do here in 2020 with the general election and, and the studies that we're planning to um, conduct. Okay, so th thanks for, for the, uh, the questions. I, I, I see that people, some people have been asking whether the, the data was uh, available. Um, Actually, there are plenty of data available on, on, the, on, this, uh, on these things. Uh, the, the data on fresh elections, we, there are plenty of data uh, that can be studied. It's not uh, immediate to do so because uh, the, the, what we did, we, we, we always, as Erade said, work uh, 
not with representative samples. Okay, so it, so it's difficult to 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 study CTS. And the advantage of what has been done at the center with this pool is that it is done with representative representative samples. So it's much easier to use. Okay, but still, this data exists, and uh, I guess as soon as the the uh, the paper we 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 have been uh, uh, writing on on, on the uh, last presidential election in the U.S. is uh, is published, the data will be available. I'm in favor of releasing data immediately everywhere. So don't hesitate to contact us if, if someone is interested. 